Welcome to our midweek devotion. I can only imagine what might have been going through David's mind as he began with the first two verses of Psalm chapter 68, a psalm that was attributed to him. He seemed to be pouring out his heart in a way that hinted he had gone through some of his worst days and when in the face of enemies, how all these have a way of making the future feel bleak, even impossible. Yet, David didn't get stuck there. I want to suggest today that David didn't get stuck in the face of his worst days, nor in the face of enemies, because David lived with a triumphant sense of destiny. He lived, you see, for the long haul. Out of Psalm chapter 68, I see a profound trigonometry of pursuits which marked David's life, and I hope will mark our lives as well. This trigonometry of pursuits I learned from a well-known city pastor here in Singapore and have adapted for this devotion. Now, the first grand pursuit is this, the God we need to know. You see, knowing God was David's experience and not just knowing about God. David had seen with his eyes how God arising would scatter enemies. In chapter 68 verse 1, he says that. He had seen with his eyes how the wicked would perish before God. In verse 2 of chapter 68, he had witnessed how God was defender of those who were powerless. And you can see that in chapter 68 verses 5. The fatherless and the widows. He saw God the provider for the poor. The word poor in its Hebrew context goes beyond just material possessions to include what a study light commentator observed as, quote, God provided a very honorable name, unquote, with, quote, no idea of shame, guilt, or disgrace, unquote. David had seen God, the conqueror of the enemies of his people, striking down their foes. You can see that in chapter 68, verses 11 through 12. How in the presence of enemies, the people of God were enriched with silver and gold whilst they slept in the camp. Verse 13 of chapter 68. The sense is that David knows the God who undertakes on his or their behalf and the enemies were defeated even before they met in battle. So, what are you facing today? What am I facing today? Because David's God is the God we, I and you, need to know. Here's the second grand pursuit and it's this the life we get to live. We get to experience life where daily, think about it, the burden-bearing God who daily, i.e. each day, bears our burdens. And this was said in chapter 68 verse 19. I don't know about you, but it was a kairos moment for me to suddenly realize that more than even just coming alongside me, more than even God, the Lord coming alongside me, the Lord actually condescends to knit himself with me, carrying my load, carrying my sorrows, my pains, my afflictions, my cares, and all that troubles me. He bears them all for me. I get to live life where God who bears my burdens says, Child, let me carry all this for you. And beyond the peril, I get to live life because He delivers me out of the trap of death that enemies had planned. In verses, chapter 68, verse 20. What about you? How many times has God delivered you from the peril of death? I mean real or figuratively speaking. Thing is, some of us may not even realize how close we came to death because of God's silent and often hidden interventions. Something else. Interestingly, when David tells us that God will crush the heads of his enemies in verse 21 of chapter 68, he is saying that God will deliver us from his enemies enemies. It was Pastor Dwight Schultz who shares this, and quote, there are many people who hate us 
because we are God's people. God will deliver us from them. The final image of verse 23 is quite shocking to us. Yet it pictures this complete triumph. Now I'm not going to read here verse 23, but please could you take time to read it for yourself? The enemies of God's people may try to hide when God comes to deliver His people. But no matter where they go, God will draw them back for judgment. God is the God who has promised that He will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. Unquote. He is God, our Avenger. Yet God takes no pleasure in the death of His enemies. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all will come into repentance. And so we have the God we need to know, the life we get to live, and here's the third grand pursuit, the changes we are called to make. In the face of our worst days and in the face of enemies, we are called to a posture of prayer and praise. Prayer for God to continue to show His strength in rebuking, humbling, and scattering the powers that threaten. And you can see David talk about that in chapter 68, verse 30. Praise because it is a declaration of faith and confidence that I and you know in whom we believe, and that He will not disappoint. Now I want to suggest that it is the innocence of David first that qualifies him to pray as he does. David is first and foremost a true worshipper of God. In Psalm 109 verse 1, we see him petition God because he is given to the praise of God. We see that in verse 1. While the accusations and animosity against David by his enemies are many, they are actually without basis. David goes on to say in Psalm chapter 109 verses 2 through 4, For people who are wicked and deceitful have opened their mouths against me. They have spoken against me with lying tongues. With words of hatred they surround me. They attack me without cause. In return for my friendship they accuse me. But I am a man of prayer. And because David was not just a man of prayer, but he was also given to the praise of God, we see that in verse chapter 68, verses 32 to 35, I do believe that in doing so, the prayer and the praise combination, there was a change in the spiritual atmosphere. It caused God to arise on David's behalf, to change David's experience, and ultimately to deliver him. For me, no matter the challenges, and it's times like this when prayer and praise can be the hardest to do. It's times like this, yet I need to be reminded that um, being prayerful and praiseful in the midst of changes are what I constantly need reminding of. And these especially in my worst days and the face of enemies when it can be so difficult to do. And perhaps it's in this posture of prayer and praise that like me, you also will experience God's power, His strength and deliverance. For I have found that the change that God calls me to make, to be prayerful and praiseful in my worst days and the face of enemies, I find God's power, His strength, and his deliverance. May it be so also for you. Amen and Amen.